All right, so first I'm going to be going in with a brow powder. I apologize. I believe this brow powder is discontinued. Anastasia also has a really great powder. That's what I use in my professional makeup kit. This one is in shade number one, and just like the Anastasia one, there's a lighter one, there's a darker one. Uh, I sometimes just only use powders, just depending on my mood, but typically the lighter colors you're going to be using in the front, the darker colors you're going to use in the tail of the brow, or in any areas that it's a little bit more sparse. Um, so I love teaching people how to use powders for brows, especially when they're new. It's very straightforward. Your products are going to last a really long time and powder is super forgiving. I also love to use powders for bridal looks because since it gives you a little bit more of a diffuse soft brow, it shows up in photography really nicely. So what I like to do is just start off by mixing the two shades together, tapping off the excess. And then this is just the Benefit Brow Brush. Uh, I believe this is still available. And I like to brush my brow hairs up to help kind of create that lift. And then I like to start in about two thirds of the way of the brow, because we don't want the front of the brows to be too harsh or too dark. And what I'm gonna do is just create my baseline. You can do this with a pencil as well too. I just like to use powders because like I said, they're gonna last you a very long time with pencils I typically like to um, pencils that are very very kind of thin um, that you twist up I like to use those and save them for more of those hair like strokes because they're really great at doing that because honestly you eat through those pencils really quickly I don't like to use them to fill in the brows or do the baseline all right so we're gonna mix the two I brush my brow hairs up I'm just gonna start by outlining the bottom of my brow super important when it comes to brows is to use a light hand and very short strokes because you don't want your brows to look so drawn on so you can already see how that just kind of already gives your brows a lot more shape now i'm going to go in with just the lighter shade in the front and continue that line towards the front of the brow and connecting it with that baseline that we just drew on. So if you line up the edge of your nose to your brow, um, that is where my brow should start. So I like to take just the lighter shade and slowly just kind of stretch in that brow powder. And sometimes I'll take it, line it up with that baseline and flick up. And later on, I'll kind of go in and show you how you can create those little brow hairs if you need to. Also, when you're working with brows, take like a split second, back up from the mirror and look at your brows from afar. So one, that you don't go too heavy handed <laughs> and then also just making sure that you have symmetry between each brow. Especially with powders, if you ever feel like you applied a little bit too much, you can really just take that spoolie and depending on the amount of pressure you add will either help kind of like soften or erase it. All right, and so since I like to create a little bit more lift with my brow, I like to focus on thickening up the arch towards my tail. And I like to do this with a pencil. This is the Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil. So this is kind of almost like a powdery pencil. So it still kind of gives me that soft look, but I can also get a little bit more of a precision with it. So I like to start by kind of almost doing the same thing that I did on the bottom by kind of creating that outline. I'm gonna start about two thirds on the way in, still using a very, very light hand and kind of start mapping out my outline. All right, so once I've kind of created that lift on the tail, I like to go back in with my powder and just kind of fill in the back half of my brow. And especially on the areas that I don't have any hair, I might just go in with just that darker shade. And 
And then just with the lighter shade, I'm going to just slowly stretch it up. But I'm not bringing it all the way, all the way in. Just to keep that front of the brow soft and light. And then I'm going to be going in with the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Um, this one I'm using for the front of my brows for hair-like strokes. So I'm going with a little bit of a darker color. So I'm going to be using medium brown just so there's a little bit of contrast. And if I were to be filling in my entire brow, depending on my mood, I would use either soft brown or taupe because I do prefer a lighter brow. So if you are wanting to create those hair-like strokes, I'd recommend going a couple shades darker. And so with this one, I like to raise my brows so that my skin is nice and taut. And then I start by placing that pencil towards my baseline and then I'm going to flick upwards in the direction of my hair growth. So very soft, light strokes. also do this anywhere that has a little bit of that sparseness All right, and since I do like a lighter brow, uh, I'm just going to line up my brows with the Dior Bold Brow, and this one's in the shade 11, which I believe is blonde. This is also nice because it gives you a little bit of like a volume and some hold as well too. So starting in the center of the brow and then working the way up towards the front. And I just kind of like to also use this product to fluff up the brows. And then I like to go in with the Anastasia Brow Gel in Caramel. This has a little bit of like a mica shimmer to it. So it kind of gives your brow hairs a little bit more dimension. And this one also just adds a little bit of kind of warmth to my brows. Uh, I love this stuff. I've gone through so many of these. I need to buy a new one. And then I like to finish this up with a little bit of clear brow gel. I find that the clear brow gel has a little bit more of a hold um, and also it kind of gives a little bit more of like a glossier finish because healthy hair has a shine to it so it makes your brow hairs look super healthy. And then I noticed that this baseline of the brow is a little bit lighter than this one, so I'm just going to go in with a brow whisk. So this one's in the shade taupe. And I'm just going to fill in just to try to match up to the other side as best as possible. There you go, that looks better. All right, and then if I usually have a little bit of extra time, I'll go in and clean up the brow bone. Um, I love using the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. This one's in the shade Vanilla, and just very, very lightly. And I'm going to wipe off the excess and just stretch that line and blend it out. So they make pencils specifically for this, which you could use. You can use concealers. 
I just like using this NARS one because it's a little bit of a drier formula, which most of those pencils are kind of drier for this purpose. But I don't know, I really like the NARS one. I also sell this concealer a lot to men because uh, it looks very undetectable on the skin. All right, and so that is how I do my brows. It changes up day to day depending on my mood or the look that I'm going for. But this kind of is my most used and favorite routine when I do have a little bit of extra time to layer the different products. And I will say these are kind of my go-to brow products at the moment. Those will change up as well too. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you need some recommendations, shoot me a DM or come see me at Sephora. Bye.